Hello everyone, my name is Shun Jabril and welcome to the third and final video of my Adobe After Effects Basics and Tip Series. Um, I'm very excited for you to be joining me and I really hope that you guys are coming from the first and second video because all that really just leads into this third one on how we, on what we do when we're done with our projects and how we can get it online and to our client. Um, in the first video we covered how to start a new project, how to import layers, um, the functions of the functions of layers and keyframes and previewing. In the second video, we covered keyboard shortcuts, motion blur, 3D layer, and pre precomposing. And in the third and final one, we're going to be covering animation presets, render settings, and render templates. So let's get started. So the first thing is animation presets. Now I've recently. I've only been using animation presets for like two years and I've been using After Effects for like five or six and animation presets are absolutely amazing. They really just make working a lot easier. So let's say I set up an animation that I want and I know in the future I'm going to want to use this animation over and over for other things. So what do I do? Do I just write down the values, the spacing of the keyframes? No, that's kind of boring. So what we can do is we can actually create animation presets for animations that we like and we want to apply to other things in other projects. So I'm going to set up an animation with the scale and the rotation. I'm going to hit U. I'm just going to move this right here. I'm going to move this right here, right here. I'm going to 0, 100, 0, rotation, so it does kind of this, whatever that is, it's kind of cool. So let's say I like that animation, I'm like, man, I'm going to use this in other projects for other reasons and kind of tweak it in other projects just to make it work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight everything, highlight the keyframes I want to set the animation preset for. I'm going to go to animation and save animation presets and we can call this scale rotate tate. Let's call it scale rotate and hit save. And where I have this saved into is I have it saved to a specific folder. I believe in if you look through your computer for Adobe after for the Adobe After Effects folder, there's a spot for the presets. So I just have a folder called user presets and my presets and that's where I save all my animation presets. So we name it how we want, we hit save and then now if we I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna create a new solid, a new layer. So I'm in a new project, I think about that animation, I'm like, you know what, I want to apply this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to animation and recent animation presets and apply that um, scale rotate that I just created. And I see that the keyframes have automatically been applied and now it's on this solid. And if it's not in the recent, you can just go to apply animation presets, find the folder on your computer and you just you can just click on it and it gets applied automatically. So I can do that for even a text layer since it has the same parameters of scale and rotation. This is text layer. So I've created a new text layer. I have that right there. And you know what? We're going to go into something new. The anchor point. Now the anchor point is really important which I should have covered earlier on in my tutorials. But if I open like position or rotation and I rotate this text, I see that it's rotating on this anchor point. So what I want to do, if I want to make it rotate in the middle, all I have to do is just hit Y on my keyboard and I can move the anchor point to the center and now the thing is going to be moving on that anchor point. So I can move it up there and I'm, I still have Y which is a keyboard shortcut up here. It's called the um, anchor point tool. So I can just move it anywhere and that's where I can rotate my text to. So this is kind of cool if you want to do like a clock animation or I don't know maybe like a bouncing animation but really you want to definitely understand what the anchor point does and how to use it because that's really how you can create a lot of cool animations because I can either make this looking like it's a bow tie that's spinning or maybe I want to do like a hammer hitting the table I move it right over there and boom 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 it's all with that anchor point. So that's really something important. Change the anchor point by hitting Y on your keyboard. 
and then you can just move the center right there and also works if it's in the 3d layer you just move the anchor points and whether it's on position or scale it scales on that anchor point so that's definitely something to get into and understand how to use but back to the presets so let's say I want to set the preset and I move this anchor point to the center right here and if I hit V on my keyboard it goes back to the selection tool so V is another shortcut to know so I go to animation I can go to reset animation presets or apply animation presets and I just find my animation preset and boom it's on there it's on there, it's on there. And let's say I want to tweak it because I want this to scale more. I can just go into the scale, could go into the keyframes, increase the scale here. So now it's been tweaked. I can even pump up the rotation. And so that's really what animation presets are. You can do that with anything you've set a keyframe for. So it's not just those position, scale, and rotation. Let's say I have an effect like effect blur fast blur let me get this back to 100 let's increase the scale a little bit let's say I do a I want to animate this blur so I set keyframes for the blur and I just bump that up and I'm like you know what you know what I like how I did that that's cool that's cool. I'm going to want to do that again. So I just highlight the keyframes, animation, save animation presets, cool blur. And I just save it and I'll just delete this layer, create a new layer. So we're, we're in a new project. We don't have those keyframes there and I want to apply that blur because I'm like, you know, I want to use that same blur that I use in that one project in this animation presets, res recent animation preset, cool blur. I hit U, I see the keyframes are there, the effect that gets applied automatically, the cool blur is there. So again, if you can set a keyframe to it, you can save it as an animation preset, which comes in so much handiness handy when you're in After Effects, handy handy. All right, so we're done with our project and we want to render it. We want to put it on YouTube, we want to put it on Vimeo, we want to show our friends, family, client, or whatever, what do we do? Well, what we do is that we make sure we're clicked in the composition that we want to render because that's very important. Because like in our other project, we created pre-comps and those pre-comps, we can render those pre-comps themselves, but we also want to be sure that the composition we're rendering is not just a pre-comp, but it's a main composition. So let's say we have all these pre-comps in here and we just want to render this that has all these, we just want to render this main composition with all this pre-comp. We don't render this one or this, we render this comp one that has everything. This is our main composition. Let's change the setting to main composition. This is what we want to render. So we can either go to file export, which is kind of new, and we can just go to Adobe Media Encoder or Adobe Render or add to render queue. Or we can just go to, what I usually do is I just go to composition, add to render queue, or add to Adobe Media Encoder. You can use either Adobe Media Encoder, that's another tutorial in itself, but that's what I usually use, but you can use Adobe Render Queue. And we just click on there, make sure our main composition is highlighted, go to Adobe, add to Adobe Render Queue. And so we have render settings, we have output 2, and we have output module. So the output 2 is where we want to save our video. So we can just save it to wherever we want, save it to a desktop, we'll call this main composition um, underscore final and save and now that's where our video is going to be saved to and render settings, what you, you really don't need to play mess with this one, excuse me, as long as this is at best, full size is good, these settings should be alright, frame rate is match what you had originally, hit OK, those are good. And this is where all the fun happens, where the magic happens, output module. So Adobe After Effects has some um, presets that they already have for you. But what you can do is you just click on here. So the output module, you click in here. And this is where you can set it. Now, depending on what you want, if you just want to render out a PNG sequence with the one frame, make sure that it's only set to one frame. Um, you can do that, or you can render out a lossless AVI. QuickTime, what I usually use is I use QuickTime Animation. So I just go to QuickTime, Format Settings, and I set it to QuickTime 
animation if I want to do like um, high quality that I'm going to put into another program or if I'm taking it to online like Vimeo or YouTube I would do QuickTime H.264 quality is at 100% output audio that can be set to auto or off if you want these look stellar and you just hit OK and now it's going to have that setting so you can either do that or let's say you have multiple compositions so we have like we have we want to render out um delete these so let's say we want to render out this orange layer at to render queue we want to render out this green layer at to render queue we want to render out this purple layer at to render queue we want to render out our main composition at to render queue and we want to change it we don't want to we want to change it all to the uh, h.264 so it's kind of bad to just kind of like bad for time to just go in and do that individually when we can just create a preset for it so render um, presets are pretty much like the animation presets it's something you set beforehand that you can apply to other things and different projects so let's this is how we set a preset we go to our output module on any of these click on this drop down arrow and go to make template and then we just go to edit and we set the template to the settings we want so QuickTime um, H.264 that looks good and my window is massive click OK that looks good audio out I audio output should be auto because that's pretty after effects can just render out an audio if it wants automatically if it reads that there's an audio in there these look good hit OK we can name this to whatever whatever we want tutorial render setting and then hit OK and now when we click this drop down arrow this gets added to the other templates slash presets that have been created so now instead of us going into it individually all we have to do is just click on this drop down arrow tutorial render settings tutorial render settings store render settings tutorial render settings so render settings and that is a lot easier because when you know when you found the render setting that you like you can create a preset for it or a template for it and so for future projects you don't always have to be going in and editing the values you can just click on it and it's automatically going to be in there and if you have a lot of stuff in bulk you can just highlight everything click on one arrow and tutorial render settings so let's say I want to do this PNG sequence everything gets changed to that PNG sequence because it's all highlighted from this one tutorial render settings and that's it everything has been set to that render setting and when we're done we just hit render and we watch the magic happens now one really important thing to make your render settings faster in Adobe After Effects is that when it's rendering what Adobe After Effects does is that it previews it in its composition and that takes up um, memory so what you want to do to prevent that is that you have your cap locks on because when your cap locks is on Adobe After Effects will not preview whatever is rendering and that makes it go definitely I believe twice as fast so if you want to render if you're rendering um, if you have like a bad computer or if you're just rendering a lot of stuff and you don't even need to watch it which I think everybody should always always be using the cap lock you just have your cap lock on and everything would render faster than if it wasn't on. So that's really important and that would really make After Effects a lot less stressful for you because sometimes renders can take hours depending on what you're doing. And so just another quick tip, um, I did mention in my previous tutorial that Control S should be your best friend, but sometimes we forget to control, hit Control Save all the time. So what we can do is we can go to Edit, Preference, um, Auto Save, and we can tell After Effects to automatically save for us. Save every three minutes, and we can have a maximum of 80 versions of the save before they start overlapping. And I have this on, and trust me, it has saved me so many times, especially the maximum version. Because there'll be sometimes when I'll be working on a project, and like maybe two days into the project, I'm like, you know what? What I did like one day ago was cool. And I definitely cannot undo it because I've closed After Effects before. So what I do is I just go into the previous um, project that After Effects is safe for me. And I just open that and start working from there. So that can really come in handy. And I think it's just good to be, if you're working as a professional, 
you just want to keep your files saved and just keep different versions of it because you don't know what might happen. Someone might be like, you know what, I like what you did about a week ago. Can we go back to that? And what are you going to say? Oh no, I just lost a day of work. Or you can just open that project and start from there instead of redoing everything. And uh, you can choose to save it next to where the original project is, which is what I like. Or you can choose a custom location for all your auto saves. But that's another important thing to really get into auto save. And me personally, I've just played with this preferences. Like I've changed my appearance with the color. So I don't know, I kind of like kind of like it dark sometimes like maybe in six months I might change it to brighter when I want something new with After Effects but this one I'm feeling right now I can choose it to affect the label colors use gradients I like I like cycle mask colors on because sometimes when you have different masks on the layer you definitely want this on to like differentiate them and yeah so that is the third and final tutorial and I hope that you have learned a lot in this series and I really challenge you to put to use everything that you've learned so make some start a new project mess with the keyframes the motion blur the 3d layer switch pre-compose a couple things create some animation presets and then render your video and put it on YouTube and just start from there and the best way to learn Adobe Adobe After Effects is to practice it and just keep using the program so thank you so much for watching this. I hope you guys learned a lot because I had a lot of fun. And yeah, I hope you really get into After Effects. Peace, and I'll see you next time.